So what would happen is if one of these went down, well, if your primary went down, um, your secondary would not be able to write to its own database because the trigger file had not been pulled yet. If the triggered file didn't get created, then uh, it will not promote its database and MAS won't be able to write to it. Also, the MAS region is set to the primary server. So right now it's set to 150. If you wanted to use this secondary in recovery, you would have to go in, reset the name, the region name, to localhost, and then restart it. Uh, I don't know of a way that you can automate this except to build a script to do it. So, that's what I did. So, we're going to set up a directory structure. And we're going to copy some, we're going to create some script files in here. And for lack of a better name, I called it check sh. So these are all shell scripts. So keep alive will allow you, it has some variables, and it will allow you to check uh, the status of your keep alive. Um, interface backup master which one's the master is it faulted uh, it will allow you to check that so load the check sh on in files on both servers there's probably better ways of doing this but this is how I'm doing it and we need to make this structure on both servers so you can see when this server becomes the master it's going to run a failover script so meaning if that uh, if the ma if the server that is master right now fails then this one becomes the master and it starts failing over and just note this so if you do service keep alive d status it will show you what state that it was last in so this is our secondary it's in the backup state it came up last so that's why it's in the backup state it came up first it's in the master state this is our first server okay so now we built the check that's going to check for if it's master and uh when it becomes a master it's going to fail over <clears throat> now how does that get kicked off well it gets kicked off in the keep alive comp file so all you have to do if you want to run a script from your keep alive file is you can use the notify command so under your virtual router ID here right here under your interface put this notify so when it rereads this file like it switches from master to backup it's going to reread this file and it's going to run this check file and if it's now master then whatever's in that check.sh will run so save that put that on both servers you don't want to restart keep alive because that might start start a failover
Okay, so check SH uh, checks what the state is of the keep alive. So what actually does the failover? Well, I created a script called failover. When check SH runs and it's in master, it kicks off the script called failover. And what failover does is it tests to see if there's a recovery.conf file because you can't recover if there isn't one. That means the it's already been recovered once. This is the recovered node if there isn't one because it will delete it the second it starts to recover. Uh, it throws a message into the syslog that failover has started. It changes the local uh, MAS region to local host so that uh, your your MAS will now be pointed at this at the recovered server. We're going to restart MAS so that change takes place and then we set the trigger file. Uh, that allows the database to be promoted and it's going to put it in that directory. It's just creating a file that has the word fast in it. That parameter where the trigger file is located was uh, in that post uh, comp file, the post GRESQL file. It's in there. And let's see, where was it? Right here, trigger file. Just to show you. It's in the recovery file, excuse me. There is no recovery file, that's good. There is no recovery file on the primary because it's not a recovery node, it's the current database. So go to your secondary, take a look trigger file. So that script is going to create that trigger file and promote your database. So this is what happens when failover starts. So we've got that. I'm also going to put out a recovery script. What the recovery script does is allow you to get back into a state after a recover has happened. And we'll talk about that uh, after we do this recovery. But we'll go ahead and put it out here for now. This is uh, the, so 151 will go the opposite, right? So this is for 151. You want to put 150 on the other. I'll show you that more here in a second. And since if we run this file, we want to put everything back to where it was, so we'd, we'd want to point again at 150. That's why we're going to change these to 150. So opposite files, opposite server addresses. So that's good. And for good measure, I change owner on everything in that failed directory so that I know that it will run without permission problems. So everything in failed goes all sevens. That's what I'm going to do for testing. Uh, as always, use your local security constraints. So before we try to test the failover, let's check a couple things and make sure they're correct. Uh, the website info should be correct for, the, for these config files, but um, 
during the video I messed with some of the files and probably didn't have the correct information in there. So on both nodes I want to check a couple things and make sure there's no typos and make sure they're set correctly. Um, let's check the PGHBA file. Let's take a look real quick. Yep. So you remember this what this is what allows connections back and forth to the servers in the database. Um, make sure that you have the bottom two. You you need one for the opposite server for the replication user and I added this one in for all. You probably can use the MAS user that would be just fine but uh, I put it in all just to make sure that it would work. Make sure this is the same. It, this looks similar on both servers or you're gonna have issues when you're failing over. So let's take a look at server two. Same thing we've got an entry for 150 we've got an entry for 150 for all and replication user so that will work uh... the information that's going to be on the website will be correct and the second thing is make sure you have all of your file all the scripting files uh... that we created on both servers um, so, so that the failover will work. Make sure they're all CH modded to a high enough permission so that they will run successfully. So we're good on this one. Check the other server, make sure they're all there. And make sure they're high enough that they will run and they're all on both servers. Now, uh, I did have some typos in in some of my in some of the video but it was right here and I corrected it so we're good now we should be able to go ahead and fill the node over uh, we just need to reboot one node so a trick also to check which um, which node is now in control you can just cat the syslog for or cat the database log for database system is ready it'll either be ready or read only and this command I'll put the command on the site but this command will get you the last line it found so at 1130 uh, we went ready accepting connections that means it's a primary okay uh, let's check the secondary node at 1135 we went database is ready and accepting read-only connections that means it's the secondary okay so now what happens when one of these reboots and fails let's just reboot the first node since it's currently the primary let's check the GUI real quick everything's up ready to go controllers are both good let's reboot the first node went away but now it's back so there we go so what happens when this node goes down so say we have a total failure of this node what's gonna happen the second that this node goes down keep alive is going to say hey uh the the our master keep alive node it's gone so now i got to find somebody to switch the master to oh well i have this node over here i'm going to make him the master well as soon as this one becomes the master that keep alive.comp file kicks off that script that check.sh script okay so the, the sh script says oh yeah when master when I see master then I'm going to run that failover.sh the failover.sh it changes 
the database location for MAS, restarts MAS, and then makes the database live so that we have recovered with one down server. So that's what's going to happen. So we rebooted the first server. It should be back by now. Let's go ahead and restart it. Let's see what actually happens when this comes back up. So in those scripts, in the recovery scripts that we created, I created some uh, um, log data. So let's take a look at that. I just had it pipe it to the temp file so that it will go away if it gets too large. So let's take a look. So this is in the failover.sh script. So what happened here? Um, it checked the recovery file. It did have one, so that means it's a failover node. Let's make it a little bigger. It checked to see what the status was before it did the failover. It was in read only. And then it checked what the status is after it did the failover. So it's ready to accept connections. So it is now the live database. So let's take a look at the database log real quick. Let's just grab the last thousand lines or so. Okay, we're seeing some database errors, but those are pretty normal. So here's where the it actually stepped in. See, it was pointing to 150 before. Well, the, the trigger file showed up uh, because of our failover script, and it made the database come available. So now we're on the primary over here. And in the, yeah, you see it's down. Database is still working okay. Okay. Uh, so we have stood in. Another thing you can check if you cat the syslog and grep for state all caps this will tell you the state of the keep alive interface and it went to master so first thing let's go over to the node that failed check and see what the state is. It's in backup, so it has failed. Let's see what the database state is. The database system is ready to accept connections. That means we have two databases going right now. Um, it has not been reset to recovery mode, which is kind of dangerous. So when you bring up your, your failed node, uh, we need to get it back into recovery as soon as possible so we don't have multiple reads and writes. And let's just see what uh, the log's doing. Let's see, 1224, those are errors from before it crashed. So let's take a look at the syslog. You have to remember this this node, the region, is still set to local host. So you're it's not likely to get reads and writes, but it's never good to bring a, a node up like this and leave it for a long period of time. It's, it thinks it still has control of that database. Let's see. Because it's still set to localhost. Um. So now we need to get back, and now that the node has come up and it's been fixed or what, whatever happened because of the disaster, 
we need to get back into a recovery state. So that's why I created uh, this recovery script. So let's take a look at it real quick. This is just a, a date variable so I can stamp dates and times on the, the logs. So it's going to check and see what the state is of the database. It's going to stop SQL. It's going to move the database over to a timestamp folder. It's going to do a backup from the current active node, which is the the recovery node, the 151 that's currently up, that stayed up. It's going to uh, set the host to 151 um, so that it's pulling from the same database. So we're going to get consistent again. It's going to restart the region and make sure that it's pointing at the correct server. So that will get you back in a recovery hot standby mode. It's also going to create the recovery steps again. So it's going to create the recovery file. It's going to put us back in standby mode, set the recovery file options that we need, create, set the trigger file location. Uh, it's going to chmod the file so that it's usable. It's going to start SQL services again. It's going to remove the recovery done file if it's there. It's going to sleep for a second and then we're going to check to see what the database is, if, what the status of the database is in, which it should be read only at that time. So let's get back in a hot standby state by running this. And you can pipe this to a output file if you like. So we're copying. We shut down this database server and we're copying the existing server over here. Now we're waiting and we're going to check the status of the database again. Okay, so the database is currently read-only. So now we should be able to go back to the GUI and both region controllers will be available. They are. So now we're back into a hot standby state. So we should see it bouncing back and forth. That's good. Uh, check and make sure that it's, I know it's there, but let's look at uh, recovery.conf is there, recovery.done is gone. Recovery.done is still there. Uh, but that's because this is the primary. It can set on the primary for a while if it wants to. Uh, it, the, our recovery script will clean it up. So that's successful recovery to the secondary node. If you wanted to fail back, really all you would have to do is reboot MAS1. And we'll probably do that when we test the RAC controller.